everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Word 2013 tutorial. This time around I'm going to be talking to you about headers and footers. Now realistically, let me just quickly define what a header and footer is before I show you how to use them. So when we start typing in different things into your document, you'll obviously notice that there's always a space at the very top of the document. Now that's controlled by a couple of things. The first one is obviously going to be the top margin of your document. The second thing is that is actually the header space of your document. So this is a place where you can put some content. All right. If you've ever read a book, a textbook, or you've done an exam, you will always notice there's things that appear at the very top of the page. So for example, in books, you will have things like the chapter page, oh sorry, the chapter name, okay, or the book name, things like that. On textbooks, you'll obviously have the topic or the chapter that you're certainly in. And then exams, they generally have the name of the paper and on the other side you've got a place to write your name for the exam. So how do you actually access this space? Well there's a couple of ways that you can access this space and the reason you can't type in it for normally is because you want to distinguish between your actual document and your header and footer and I'll explain why they distinguish it and make sure that it's so distinguished in just a moment. But how do you access it first of all? Okay, There's a couple of ways and the first way that you should always access it is generally through the insert tab. Okay, over here on the side there's header and footer and also page number which we'll talk about in a second. But realistically if you want to access the header section you click on the header and you just choose from one of the built in ones just there or you can just purely click on edit header. Okay, so all these here, these are templates I guess you can call them for your header. So if you select one of these you're going to get something that looks almost exactly like that at the top of your page. Okay. Feel free to go through these, try a couple of different ones, have a look at which ones you like. <clears throat> but you need to pick the one that's going to be obviously most suited to the document that you're creating. So I'm just going to click on the blank three columns. And what it's going to do is it's going to look exactly like this at the top of my page, but it's also going to give me access to the header section of my document. And there it is. You'll notice that the document title or the actual page is a little bit grayed out. It's because we're currently in the header section and this is where all the editing is currently taking place. All right, so you get three cells that you can type in whatever you want. And generally speaking, on a regular document, you'd put things like the document title, you'd then put your name, and then potentially, I suppose, the date. You don't have to have that many fields at the top, but you can. Now, I'm just going to undo those three. Do, do, do. <clears throat> and show you something pretty quick and pretty easy to use. So you'll notice first of all that we're under the header and footer tools, okay? And all these buttons have to do with the header and footer, especially the close header and footer button. I'm going to talk about that in a second, obviously. But let's say I want the document title to appear here. Now I could obviously type in the name of the document, or I could use what's called a field, okay? Or a quick part, depending. Okay, but I'm going to use the document info button here. If I click on that, you've got access to all these different fields that you can choose from here. And you'll notice that document title appears straight away. Now that doesn't look very interesting at the moment, but I'm going to show you how you can change that in just a second. Let's have a look at the second one. I want the author's name. So let's click on author. And it automatically puts in my name because I'm the one who created this document. And thirdly, we may want the date to appear there. So you'll notice there's no date there, but if I go to document property, we can have a look down here. There's published date. Yeah, maybe, sort of. We can also choose field, okay, which gives us a whole slew of things that we can choose from. Now, half of these I've never used before, but realistically, if you come down, there's create date, okay? Click OK. You may not want the time. So let's just bugger that off. Oh my gosh, I keep highlighting too much. Just get rid of the time, and there's your date. All right, now how do you get the document title in there? That actually comes from the info of the document. You can save your document, and it's still not going to set a title inside there. However, if you come to File, click on Info, there is Title on the right-hand side. So what I could do is just quickly put, I don't know, Header and footer intro. Okay. And then I'm just going to click back. And there it is. Alright. So that is a quick introduction to the headers and footers. Now, 
The reason why this is generally locked out by default is because a header and a footer will repeat for every single page that exists in your document. Okay, so to show you that, I'm just going to close the header and footer by clicking the close header and footer button. Amazing stuff. You'll notice it's grayed out. That means I can't actually click on it and type it. But if I just go to the next page, so I'm going to insert a page break with Control Enter. See my header appears the exact same way it does on the previous page. If I insert another page and another page, they all appear the exact same. Just like that. Okay. Now let's say, for instance, that you made a stuff up and you don't want my name to be in the middle of that, like your author name, I guess you could say. What you could do to re-access that is go to the Insert tab, click on Header, and then click the Edit Header button. Or, an even quicker way of doing that, is just by double-clicking inside the header area. And you could do this when there is nothing in there as well. So I'd just highlight my name, or just even click on the author and delete it. And there you go. And you'll notice that it updates automatically on every single page. Now, the most obvious use for headers and footers is for the footer to have the page numbers. So, I didn't actually define, but the header is obviously what sits at the top of the page, and the footer sits at the bottom of the page, okay? You can see the little grayed out area is the footer area. So, let's insert. We can go to footer, and we can choose one of these built-in ones here. It's entirely up to you. I think they look pretty butt ugly. There's probably some nice looking ones at office.com. Or we can go to page number. Select bottom of the page and select one that actually looks a little bit nicer, okay? To tell you the truth, I'm a bit old-fashioned. I just like the basic ones like that. Page one of four. Pretty damn simple. And you'll notice, page two of four, three of four, four of four. It automatically increases the page number as you go down in the footer. However, they're exactly the same. So if I was to add, say, the document name, on the left hand side here, if I can, uh, let's just do it here because I inserted the page number, let's put it down there, so let's go, document, docu file name, okay, that'll again appear on every single footer throughout the document. That's pretty straightforward, that's a quick introduction to header and footer, now for the rest of the video, I'm just going to show you a couple of advanced techniques for headers and footers. Let me get rid of that because that's butt ugly. I don't like that. But you'll notice that a lot of the time you're going to have a cover page for the very first page that you use. And then the rest of them are going to be content, body, and then the index, I guess, at the end of your document, depending on how big it is, I guess. But realistically, for the actual title of the document, there never is a header. There's never the name, the title of the document, the pages, the author and things like that. It always sort of comes second page and onwards. So what you do there is a simple little trick is tick this box that says different first page. And you'll notice that instantly goes away, but it's kept in the remainders of the other pages. But you'll also notice the page numbers are in, the first page is still included as a page. It just doesn't display it. So what I could actually do, I could type in whatever I want in the first header, or footer for that matter, and it's not going to appear in the rest of the document. Okay, so that's one little trick there. And if you don't like it, untick the box, everything goes back to normal. He, just a little thing that you can tick, and you saw what that did. The second one here, different odd and even pages. It works the exact same way as different first page does, but basically, Every odd page has its own header and footer, and every even page has its own header and footer. And the use of that would be if you have a booklet that you're creating. So let's say on the left-hand side of the booklet, you want the chapter name at the top, and on the right-hand side of the booklet, you want the name of the book. So what I can do is tick that, okay, and we'll leave the document title and the published date in there. And you'll see this is an even page, so it gets a different header and a different footer. So let's say on the even header, we want the chapter name. So let's say... Chap, don't do that word, chapter one, tab tab to get across the other side, um, now nah, let's leave that, and then on the footer, you probably want the page number there, so what I'm going to do there, we'll just go page number, bottom, and just select the one that we had before, 
and you'll see that the header is different, the footer is the same. That's pretty much it. To get the other way of getting out of your closing, I suppose, the header and footer, is just to double click inside your document, and that will close your header and footer. All right, it was a pretty quick and easy video today, everybody, but that is essentially a header and footer introduction for you. Hope you learned something, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next video where we're going to do some stuff about page layouts. So, catch you then.